This is my favorite of my alcohol stoves. And I'm doing some of these uh, <coughs> videos on, you know, the making of them. I didn't do a real good job of documenting making this one. And one of the people who watched the video asked why this didn't need primed. He was looking for a new one. I filled this with um, fiberglass cloth and a fire blanket. Well, the problem with fiberglass, it can be a kind of a negative thing. So I'm going to remake this and show you how I did. Now, like I said, Pearl's Infusion, Walmart, $1.20 a can. It'll look like this. So the reason for choosing this is it's a nice little size, but you'll notice that it also has a pull ring top. So, first things first, I'm going to pull the top. Now, the top, pull ring top is a significant factor here because that um, gives me the lip I wanted. So, I'm going to clean this up and we'll talk more. I'll take more. Okay, so I've taken the can, I've washed it out and dried it. So, now, as I say, you will see the the version that will end up working the same, but I'm going to put a different material in this one. Um, fiberglass, you don't want to burn too much if you're going to leave food over it, so I'm going to put something different in, but it'll work just beautifully. So what we need for this will be this can, a paper punch, And we need some scissors that we can cut with. Uh, these are the dollar store shears for the buck. They work gorgeously with all this stuff. So here's my snips. Cotton balls. And some dollar store steel wool. Then later on, we're of course going to need our alcohol. So, first things first. Oh, and a, uh, an aluminum can. <clears throat> um, as you can see, this one's kind of beat up. Wouldn't make a real good stove. So, I'm going to cut through that real quick. store kitchen shears are just perfect for this. Now, this is a little dangerous if you haven't done these before right here. So, be real careful. Wearing gloves is not a bad idea. Right, let me take my neck knife off because it's a little in the way. So uh, lay down my ow. I'll lay down my can here on the foil. And trace a circle onto the inside of the can. <clears throat> so this circle is now slightly larger than the top of the can. And I actually going to want to cut just inside the line. And we'll look here in a minute when we get this done. Now with the test fit, you can see that it's still too large. 
which we know. We're going to want to trim it down just a little bit. Remember that any of these pieces that we trim off are going to be very sharp. So we want to protect everybody from those. Alright, so now let's see how this fits. Now that'll fit inside. You can see how this fits. If you've ever used um, an alcohol stove, you know they can get kind of warm. And we don't want to get our cotton ball super, super warm, but they'll handle the heat well enough. I'm going to stuff a few in there. Like, eh, one more. All right, so not a lot of cotton balls to do that. So we want to get our steel wool here. Pull it out. We've got, like I say, various grades of steel wool in this package. So I'm going to take me a couple of things of the steel wool. See how they can push in here beautifully. This part, um, actually I'm going to put the third one in I think. Because I want this good and packed. There we go. No. I could leave this so that everybody would know if I cut up a Diet Coke can. But I'll go the other way. So, <clears throat> I was asked by Muskrat Jim why this particular stove did not need primed. And the reason it does not need primed is the, one, the penny stoves need primed because they're building up pressure which forces... Uh, the gas out. I messed up. And so they have to pressurize. This one is not a pressurized stove. Therefore, it does not need to be uh, primed in that manner. So I'm just kind of putting this on top, pushing down and feeding it under that lip. And if it's good and I like it, which I think we're pretty good. Now the one thing I'm going to do, which I did to the other one, is I'm going to put a hole here in the middle, just because. All right. So here we have a very tried stove. Here we have one that's new, and. As soon as it gets a little bit darker, by the way, this one is very heavy. I, I, I'll probably put it on scale later. This one, because it's not made of the same material, it's much, much, much lighter. So I'm going to, as soon as it gets just a little bit darker, uh, where the flames would become visible, I'm going to put alcohol in here. I'll put, uh, hmm, I'll put an ounce and a half of alcohol in. Well, I like to cook with two because that gives me, with, with this one, it gives me plenty of cooking time. So I'll probably try this with uh, two ounces for a test burn. I'll put it with this stand here. I'll sink this just slightly and we'll go about like that. You can see the height. And we'll do a test cook on it. We'll see how long we get a really good flame. We'll put it on, see how long it takes to boil water. And then we'll see how long the flame continues while we can leave. Once the, because I'll put it in a tea kettle. Once it's whistling, I will, uh, you know, take it off and, or open the thing up and just let it boil and see how long it'll boil. So we'll use a 16.8 ounce bottle of water for that test, and we'll go from there. So. The question that Muskrat Jim asked was a really good one about why it does not need primed. And I will show you how easily these, this will light. And we'll see how well it does if I tip it over with 
because of the materials used, we'll see how well it'll hold on to its fluids. So, as soon as it gets just a little later in the evening, I'll start this up. Okay, so it's been long enough now that I can pretty well pick this up. And uh, yeah, that's my penny. Pardon the noise in the background. Uh, you know, the neighbors are up and about, so life is, life is. I'm going to fill my bottle with three ounces of alcohol. I'll try and get a little bit on the camera. If I do that, I'm going to be more apt to spill it, which is what I was trying not to. So. Right. I'm missing my penny. Hang on. Right. Sorry for the disruption there. So I made the depression in the ground like I would normally. Now I'm going to add, because what I would normally do in mine is add two ounces of alcohol. That gives me an well, ounce and a half to two ounces. An ounce and a half for most meals that I want to cook and simmer. Two ounces if it's something that I want to do more. All right, alcohol is added. A moment to soak. And you can see that it's not leaking when I turn it, which is exactly what we want. <clears throat> but, because it's a wick, it lights immediately. And I'll put my ring around it. <coughs> Wish that the flame was, you know, uh, more visible. Now I've added my water to my tea kettle, and I'll set it on the pot stand. Right. Sorry for the disruption there. All right. <clears throat> so I made the depression in the ground like I would normally. Now I'm going to add, because what I would normally do in mine is add two ounces of alcohol. That gives me an well, ounce and a half to two ounces. An ounce and a half for most meals that I want to cook and simmer. Two ounces if it's something that I want to do more. All right, alcohol is added. A moment to soak. And you can see that it's not leaking when I turn it which is exactly what we want. <clears throat> but, because it's a wick, it lights immediately. And I'll put my ring around it. <clears throat> I like it down. We have noisy neighbors and noisy cicadas. Okay, let's see if I can get this on the camera. This line pattern. Doesn't show very well. We are still simmering away and boiling out my water.
Almost a half hour in. You can see there's still flame going. Okay. We are still. Simmering away. You can see, for the most part, I think, what the flame pattern looks like. So, it's been over half an hour. Oh, this was it. I'm afraid to even touch the, uh, the grill ring. So it's warm, I can pick it up with my hand. And I'll put it out. So, as you can see, <clears throat> it would still simmer for a while. But the test looks pretty good, doesn't it? So to answer Muskrat Jim's question about why it doesn't need uh, a prime, because it is a wicking material. And this one is cotton and steel wool. The heat is still pretty intense off it. I haven't let it burn all the way out. So later, folks. Bye now.